So I've certainly been trying to broaden my horizons, both with what I personally wear, as well as what I cover on this channel when it comes to case sizes. But actually looking back, there's really only been one video this year when actually looking at smaller wrists. So what I wanted to do is kind of update for 2021, looking at a list of watches for smaller wrists. So in this video, we have roughly 20 different watches for smaller wrists. Just some general guidelines here, going to look at all different price ranges. We'll go in ascending order. And then in addition to that, in terms of just case size itself, I'm gonna probably keep everything under 40 millimeters. Now, there might be some just fluctuation in terms of what's going to qualify because just given the actual use case of the watch, that 40 millimeter might not tell the whole story, but just relatively, that's gonna be the cap for what we're looking at. Now, before we jump into this video, I do wanna mention a brand I'm very happy that we are now an authorized dealer of on teddybaldesser.com, ball watch company, a brand that also has roots in Cleveland, Ohio, like where I am from. And it's one that was started in 1891 by Web C Ball after a tragic train crash that happened in Kipton, Ohio, where chronometric precision was needed for new railway watches on board trains. Cleveland, Ohio at this time was essentially the epicenter when it came to the railway industry, and Ball was a huge impetus for allowing that to continue to progress when it came to developing timekeeping uh, devices that were actually suitable in these conditions. So definitely check out the different offerings that we have. Engineer M Marvelite with their proprietary caliber, the Engineer 2, moon phase, a lot of different options on the site. So definitely go check those out, teddybaldasar.com. Now to start this video off, I wanna look at two watches from Casio that I just feel like I have to mention because they're great watches for smaller wrists. One is gonna be with the Casio A168, and the other one is the Casio F91W. So these are watches that I've covered on the channel in the past, I've owned these in the past. I mean, they're just kind of just great no-brainer watches, and their case dimensions are also going to be rather compact, but given the digital format, it doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. I think these can be worn a little bit larger, but given that kind of dynamic, they could just be worn on so many different wrists. These follow the format of the 1970s Casio Tron watches, and just continue to kind of live out that legacy in a modern context. You have the resin case Casio F91W, which truly is, I mean, you probably could say a borderline icon, if not an icon in itself, such a recognizable design and so synonymous with the brand. Same can be said about the A168, just going to be in a steel format. Bracelet is surprisingly pretty good for a $25 watch. I, honestly, I always have to do a double take when I just say that out loud, a $25 watch. I actually have a full in-depth video looking at the A168. It's kind of a lot of fun to put together just because it was just such a ridiculous just proposition to look at a $25 watch and still have something nice to say. So definitely go check that one out. But certainly those two, I think a good way to start off this list. All right, so now next up, we have the Seiko 5 collection. And I'm just going to look at one specific one, but also mention some other ones that might make some sense. But the SNK 800s, these have been long standing in the Seiko 5 collection. But I think from how to actually be able to get into them at an attainable level, around $100 still, if you can just go in, you know, just different markets and find it, might change depending on where you're at in the world. Really wearable dimensions. A lot of the newer Seiko 5 options are kind of just been broadened out to around 39, 40 to 42 millimeters, depending on the different style that it's going for, but these are at 37 millimeters, lug to lug dimension, just around 43 millimeters. You are getting some downsides that come with these, just given the water resistance only being 30 meters. And you also get the 7S26 movement, which is not gonna be hacking or hand winding. So an older out of date movement that has now been updated with some new 4R calibers. Just as an honorable mention to this line, I will mention that the new SRPEs, despite being 40 millimeters, still can be a suitable option here. I'm talking about the, say the 5.3, which I've covered on the channel as well, putting it up with the Orient Maestro, two watches at 40 millimeters that wear smaller than that case size. So you can check that one out as well. But the SNK 800s, these have been on the market for quite some time, been beloved by many enthusiasts, and I think still in 2021 hold up quite well for $100. Now next up here, we have the Timex Marlin specifically the model that really opened the floodgates for the brand when it came to developing mechanical timepieces with the hand winding version. So this is going to be a smaller watch in the grand scheme of things. We're looking at 34 millimeters, but given the use case, the intended purpose of this watch being a dress oriented piece, I think it allows that 34 to scale nicely across different wrists. Recently did a video looking at kind of watch size versus wrist size. And what we did was we paired up 
this watch as well as some others with different wrists within the office. And it kind of just showed how this watch scaled with size. I think that really was a great demonstration in allowing you to see kind of how use case is important when factoring in a watch. But still, at the end of the day, where this really looks the most at home is on a smaller wrist. 34 millimeters, 41 millimeter lug to lug distance. It's gonna be rather compact. You're getting a hand wound Siegel movement. So basically they're just reworking this to only have hand winding functionality. But for around 200 bucks, getting this nice retro 1960s look. The Timex Marlin, they got a lot right with this piece and there's a good reason why they followed this and basically have just unveiled, honestly, endless amounts of Marlins now in 2021 at this point. Now a watch type that is notorious for being rather large, and it's done with actual intention just given the use case, is Flieger pilot style watches. During World War II, this was required as a byproduct of just this being in the cockpit. You need to be able to tell at a quick glance what is the time. Legibility is absolutely crucial and some of these larger original Flieger style watches were up to 55 millimeters in their case size and going over the uh, cuffs of pilot sleeves. So. With that context, to get something at a smaller case size is sometimes difficult, but I would say the best option from an affordable perspective is with the Laco Augsburg. So Laco as a brand, although now under different ownership, is a brand with great pedigree in the area of Flieger style watches. It was one of the original five during World War II that were developing these types of watches. And the Augsburg is a type A style dial. I think it's one of the most versatile dials you're gonna find in the market. Some people might just classify it as plain Jane, but it was created in a way to really optimize legibility, great loom on this piece. This particular one is coming right at around $400. And when you factor in the Sapphire Crystal, you're getting some heritage with the brand and what it's going for, 39 millimeters, nice lug to lug dimension at 46 and a half. Should wear pretty true to a 39 millimeter case, still relatively larger, but it will work. You're getting an automatic Miyota 8000 series movement on the inside, but this does get an upgrade of a hacking feature, which is really great to see. And considering most Flieger watches, when you're talking about either from Laco, Stova, other brands in the space are usually around $1,000. The fact that this is using a Japanese caliber is allowing this one to be much more attainable. And I think it's probably the best Flieger style watch you're gonna find for under $500 in my opinion. Speaking of being the best in its price category, I think when you talk about Hamilton and field watches, that's also very true. But one we're gonna be looking at here is kind of a hybridized approach to their field watches and pilot watches with the Khaki Aviation Pilot Pioneer. That one rolls right off the tongue. But this is kind of a rather unconventional watch in regards to its case dimensions and is really best suited for smaller wrists. So these models are going to really be emulating those W10s from the 1970s from the likes of Hamilton that were producing them as well as CWC. Now the true dimension of this is around 36 millimeters, lug to lug of 42 millimeters. So this is a relatively small watch a little bit unconventional in the case sizing as well and just the shape. 100 meters of water resistance, you're getting a modified hand wound at a 2801. They're H50, 80 hour power reserve, which is great. This does have a mineral crystal, so that can be seen on both sides, one being maybe the negative side, which is not gonna have the same amount of resistance to scratches as Sapphire, but on the flip side, the dial and just how this thing pops with that mineral crystal, you really have to just kind of almost see it side by side with another Hamilton khaki field watch. And this mineral does a lot for making this dial pop. It almost has this graphite look to the dial surface that really just struck me when I saw it for the first time. It's a beautiful watch, definitely a little bit different in terms of what it's positioned as, more vintage in its aesthetic, but still a beautiful watch and certainly one to consider for a smaller wrist. So a personal favorite from our store, but also now has kind of increasingly become one of my favorite watches from a tool watch perspective for the range is the Marathon Search and Rescue. Recently, we looked at the GSAR collection. So those are more of the full-size dive watches for the brand at 41 millimeters. But what we're gonna be looking at here for a smaller wrist is the MSAR, the Medium Search and Rescue. Now, I just wanna mention this right up front. This is a small watch, 36 millimeters, lug to lug of 43.5, but given how the tritium and how deeply seated the dial is, it creates a strange optical effect with the eye that just makes this thing look more compact. Also consider that the bezel is going to overshoot the bounds of the case just a tad. So that also creates a little bit of an optical illusion. But for those that want a small watch, a small dive watch, which you have to factor in that dial to bezel ratio and just allowing this thing to wear a bit smaller, probably around 35 millimeters or so, it's certainly one to consider and very different because most watches I find that are gonna be mid-size are not just 
really evoking this crazy tool watch aesthetic. Getting some suitable water resistance, Swiss Caliber automatic on the inside, sapphire crystal, getting the use of tritium, which is a really cool use case and material that Marathon is probably one of the most famous brands of utilizing. But a proper dive watch and one that definitely walks a different line compared to the typical mid-sized dive watches that you're gonna find in the market. Now, I think everybody who gets into watches has this moment where they see a watch for the first time and it's some specific watch and the design might be a little bit different, but it just simply speaks to you. One of those watches for me was the Junghans Max Bill. This was a watch that uh, at the time of seeing it, for some reason, it just resonated with me so much. There's something about this design that I appreciated and what it was going for. It was minimalist, but it didn't have that absence of thought that a lot of minimalist watches had that I was just being bombarded with, with fashion watches and things of that sort. This had a different approach that I really appreciated and just how cohesively this design came together in many ways with the crystal, the kind of turning back of the edge periphery or the perimeter of the dial and allowing that to really come together. It just spoke to me in a, in a great way. Now the Maxbill is the flagship model for Junghans as a brand. It was developed by the Swiss designer that also so went to the Bauhaus School of Design in Max Bill. It was essentially an adaption from a wall clock design into a wristwatch design. And I think even today still looks as great as it did back in the mid 20th century when this was starting to be rolled out. These watches come at 38 millimeters, but given that just thin outer bezel that is almost completely absent, it allows this watch to wear pretty substantially still on a wrist without kind of overstepping its bounds. You're looking at 40 millimeters for that lug to lug. So it's almost just all dial. So it kind of creates a nice middle ground of visual effect. These now are available with sapphire crystals, which is great news for some people out there without sacrificing that charm that comes with that plexiglass that I think really allows these just watches to come together. The hue, the vintage hue, of that crystal I think works so well in bringing this design together. But certainly a great watch for, I would say, what a modern dress watch should be, while also allowing it to be utilized in a lot of casual environments with the variety of straps that you can utilize and just outfits that you can buy a pair with this thing. So next up here, we have Longines with the Heritage collection that they have. I think there's a couple watches that you can look at here, but one I'm gonna mention first is the Heritage Classic Sector. This watch, I just absolutely fell in love with the first time I saw it. I had a review on this watch, fell in more in love with this, this piece, and it was just, something that epitomized an era and epitomized Longines and what they do best, which is these just heritage issued pieces. I think this is Longines at its best and doing what they do best at the peak of performance. I love this watch and what the sector dial is able to do. Also getting some nice spec as well in the process. You're getting their ETA A31 inside. This is a movement that's made by ETA exclusively for Longines, 64 hour power reserve. It's just a fantastic watch all around. In addition though, they have unveiled some new pieces as of late. You can look at the Heritage Classic Silver Arrow. This has a lot of the same just retro elements, a bit more dressy in its appearance compared to the everyday elements that come with the Heritage Classic sector. But this Heritage collection from Longines is one to look at, I think for a lot of just variety in just somebody who has a smaller wrist. So a brand that does a wonderful job when it comes to developing different watches for a variety of different wrists is Oris. Whether you're talking about the Aquas collection, the Oris Big Crown pointer dates with the different options there, or the Oris Diver 65, these all have a variety of different case sizes, but I'm gonna really key in on one of these, and that's gonna be the Oris Diver 65 with the Cotton Candy Edition. Now, when these were unveiled earlier this year, honestly, it was either, I love these things, I need more of them, I can't get enough, or burn that thing with fire. Pretty much the only stances people had on these, but I kind of lean into, I you know like these watches a lot. I mean, I don't know if I can necessarily pull it off, but I totally get the charm and what this watch is going for. You're getting the bronze case, which I think looks really cool in contrast to this pastel -y colors of the dials that you're gonna be getting here. 38 millimeters, so this is a nice, just kind of middle ground in regards to what we've seen from the Oris Diver 65 in the past, mostly 40 millimeters, 42 and 36. This wears pretty true to that 38 millimeter size without making it feel like a very overly small dress watch. Total unisex watch, in my opinion, 45.7 millimeters on that lug to lug distance, 100 meters of water resistance, which is pretty much standard for this line. Uh, but that bronze bracelet also I think just looks the part. And given that the patina is going to be inevitable with this case, I still think it's going to look even maybe increasingly uh, better compared to some other just aging bronze watches just because the contrast of the bronze material with that pastel color of the dial. I think it's just gonna have an intriguing look after some time and there's some photos on Instagram. If you just search by a hashtag of the Oris Cotton Candy or whatever the uh, 
specific hashtag would be that's gonna have the most results. You're gonna see some different out in the wild examples and I think it just creates a cool and just uh, effect with that aging. So going from looking at a brand with a solid track record and accommodating smaller risks to one that is almost notorious for not doing that at all in Breitling. But the example that we have here is one that I think does a very good job in showing that Breitling is a little bit different today than they were in years prior. And that is with the Breitling Super Ocean. So in a recent video, we looked at the white dial version, but personally, I think that one probably is going to lean a bit more on the feminine side, but they do have a variety of different sizes to choose from. I think many of these offerings from this collection certainly could be a uh, unisex in a lot of ways, but you're getting some nice just spec with the overall package as well. Depending on the bracelet or strap option, that's going to affect the price a bit, but 200 meters of water resistance, uh, you're getting a higher grade at a caliber on the inside, sapphire crystal, uh, lug to lug dimension of 42.4 millimeters, and some nice different dial colors to choose from. And I think just the entire Super Ocean collection is often overlooked by many people out there, and I think they just deliver some really compelling packages at the end of the day, and this is certainly one of them. So recently we did a video doing a comprehensive guide to the Black Bay 58, which I will just kind of leave as an honorable mention for this video, just because I've kind of hit that watch quite a bit this year so far with all the new additions and uh, just my personal affinity to that line. But as one for a smaller wrist, which I think is probably going to be the most appropriate option is the Tudor Black Bay 36. One of the most quiet, releases of 2021 was a new variant of the Black Bay 36 with a silver dial. I think it looks very sharp. This is the watch that has been long beloved by enthusiasts and for good reason. 44 millimeters with that lug to lug dimension, 36 millimeters with that case, 150 meters of water resistance. You're getting an elevated grade ETA on the inside, sapphire crystal. There's just simply a lot to like about these watches, variety of different dial colors to choose from. Essentially, these are, I would say, wearing very similar to that of the Rolex Datejust, which is, I think, probably one of the most universal 36 millimeter cases you're gonna find. It's gonna work pretty much any wrist out there. Same can be said for these. Have a little bit less flair, of course, with the rounded off bezel rather than the fluted bezel, but these still look the part and are probably some of my favorite watches that Tudor makes still to this day. The next up here, we have Grand Seiko. And Grand Seiko, typically, when you're talking about their spring drives, have cases that are just kind of struggling to be able to be condensed down to a smaller form factor. But when you go to their manual calibers, it really opens up the possibilities when talking about a watch for a smaller wrist. The spring drive certainly still can work, but when you're talking about what is the most applicable to a smaller wrist, I would look at something with these manual wound calibers, particularly with the SBGW 231. So these models have been long standing in the collection, the manual wound caliber, a nice range of deviation to plus five to minus three when you're talking about just static conditions. But these also got some updates as well as of late with a nice just limited edition trio. How fitting, of course, in green, cause you know, what else to do in 2021 except do that. But these look sharp, thin on the wrist, solid form factor. And I think these will be right out the alley for somebody that's looking for a dress watch from Japan with top tier finishing. So a watch that certainly needs to be on this list is with the Rolex Oyster Perpetual. No question about it, I think this almost sets the standard for around $5,000 of what a luxury watch should be. The problem is typically you can't find them for that money. But I love this watch. This is still probably one of the best watches that Rolex makes from a modern perspective. This and the GMT Master II and the Explorer, probably my favorites from their entire offering. Variety of different dial colors to choose from. You're getting now some updated case sizes. They're really leaning into either the 36 millimeter option or the 41 millimeter option. Of course, I think we know which one is gonna be more appropriate for this video. Also some upgraded movements. You're getting the new upgraded calibers with the uh, extended power reserves on these, 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystals. Rolex, of course, on the dial, which is going to have some nice brand cachet. Bracelet is probably the standard or maybe best in class in this price range. I simply love the Oyster Perpetual. It looks great on a man's wrist, a woman's wrist, pretty much any wrist out there. And I think a lot of the factors that were just kind of uh, brought up when it talking about the Tudor Black Bay 36 are also present here with these watches as well. So the next watches we have here, I think are a bit different than the typical watches that you're going to maybe see on some people's wrists, which I think are great. First one is going to be with the JLC Reverso Tribute Small Seconds. This is a watch that I've covered in quite just a detailed amount, uh, looking at a variety of different dial colors. Of course, the latest and greatest is going to be the green dial version, which I think looks pretty great in this format of the Reverso. Uh, you're getting their JLC manual caliber, the 822-2, 45.2 millimeter on that lug to lug distance. So what I like to 
to do from a circular case equivalent is basically say this is a 38 millimeter case, which I think is right in the wheelhouse for what a modern dress watch should be, at least from a small wristed standard. Not gonna speak for everybody, but that's just kind of what I think. But these are watches that I think are great when it comes to the actual wearing dimensions, but also almost kind of have a bigger stature in regards to what story they tell when they are on your wrist. With that chassis system, ever since these were unveiled, the Reverso is going to be a watch that I would say a true enthusiast likes, someone who's a bit mysterious in what they go for. I just simply adore the Reverso and what it represents as a watch and how unconventional it is, but still how classic it is at the same time. Now next up here, we have the Zenith Chronomaster A386 Shadow. So this is a watch that is going to be much different than most chronographs on the market. And most of it comes down to the case as well as the case finish itself. So this is a microblasted titanium case, extremely lightweight, but the dimensions on this thing at 37 by 47 millimeters is quite different. The faceted avant-garde approach to this Tano style case, it just simply works. And I just love the way that this watch just has a totally different take on what a chronograph can look like. And the black, just muted colors of this just works so well in my opinion. And really what this watch is representing is a 1970s prototype was a stainless steel PVD coated case that quickly just kind of vanished off the face of the earth. But this is really representing that prototype in a modern package. And I think Zenith just absolutely nailed it with this piece. Now going back to the world of dive watches, we have the Glassuta Original CQ. So this watch comes in at a 39 and a half millimeter case with a 47 millimeter lug to lug distance, 200 meters of water resistance, and getting an automatic in-house caliber from Glass Juta, the 3911. So this is the watch that I've covered in great detail in a full in-depth review. And I simply really love this watch. It's based off of a 1969 design known as the Spezomatic. And you can see a lot of that, but you're also getting some modern touches in terms of what this one is going for, ceramic bezel, well-finished movement, lovely clasp and on the fly adjustment and how it's just kind of hidden within in that clasp. Beautiful watch all around. I think the pricing of this one is probably the number one reason why it's maybe not talked about as much. It's just in an area with some tough competition, simple as that, but no question, a beautiful watch at the end of the day. And now to round us out, looking at what I would classify as almost the big three of entry-level dress watches from high horology brands with the Longa Saxonia Thin, the Patek Philippe Calatrava, the 6119, and then also with the Traditionnel from Vacheron Constantin. So all of these watches are going to range from around 37 millimeters to around 39 millimeters. So it should work on a variety of different wrists. In terms of actual value, and I know that seems crazy when you're talking about watches of this tier, I think the Saxonia certainly stands out as well as the Vacheron Constantin uh, Traditionnel. Huge fan of both of those watches, the Calatrava as well as nothing to scoff at, but I think partially the price is going to make it a little bit out of reach for some people. And in addition, even when kind of matching up against these two watches. All of them, again, going to be between 37 millimeters and 39 millimeters should be appropriate on a wide variety of wrists. All are showcasing beautiful in-house calibers, the L093 within the Saxonia Thin. You're getting an upgraded movement within the new Calatrava. Moving on from the 215 caliber finally and moving into the 3255 PS movement on the inside. Extended power reserve on that to 65 hours. And then for the VC Traditionnel, you then will have the 4400 AS, which also is featured in other watches and their manual wound watches. Uh, say something like the 1921, which I've covered on the channel in quite a great amount of detail. But all right, guys, that is a lineup of some of the best watches for smaller wrists in 2021. Love to see comments down below. Which watch would you go for if you could pick out any of these watches? What is your favorite watch for a smaller wrist? If you're someone with a larger wrist, I promise something is coming for you very soon. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. But if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. It does help out the channel as well. In addition to that, definitely check out teddybaldesar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we carry. So if something goes wrong, you're completely covered. We offer price match. So if one of our watches is seen in another authorized dealer for cheaper, you then can fill out the form and we'll be in touch with you. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into this content that we're creating here. Also, if you wanna stay up to date with this content, be sure to follow on Instagram and see some cool photos of watches in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.